Tropical Storm Sanfu hanging on in the Western Pacific as it slowly makes course towards the Mariana Islands. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for April 22nd. Tropical Storm Sanvu being the main feature out there in the tropics today. The 16th tropical storm to form around the world in 2023. Um, Cesar on our team has been providing updates on this, that storm for the last two evenings or mornings local time. And here we are on the Tropical Weather Bulletin this time. In the Atlantic, it's 40 days until hurricane season. There's a line of storms crossing the United States at this time. Over the open Atlantic, however, though, it is fairly quiet. One or two little storms are brewing and an extratropical cyclone moving across off the coast of Atlantic Canada. In the Western Pacific, then, Sanfu is quite clearly visible there with the tropical storm icon uh, way out there over the open Western Pacific, just north of the Mariana Island uh, of the Micronesia Islands now, and a 10% chance that we have circled uh, for the South Pacific for a potential system that could end up developing late on in the seven-day period near New Caledonia. Chances are low at this time, even for that extended period, and we may or may not see any further chances. Elsewhere around the world though it is very quiet with no chances of development for any systems in the next five days at least. Over the Indian Ocean it is very quiet with no areas of interest looking suspect at all. Just a few clouds in the tropical regions there. Madagascar looking quiet. The Masarine Islands a little bit of cloud to the southeast. Satellite imagery in the last 24 hours depicts a very heavy fall of rain f over parts of Africa there, particularly over Congo, Cameroon and Nigeria. Uh, elsewhere though, it's been fairly quiet uh, with a few little bursts across the uh, Amazon region and over further eastern parts of Africa as well. But to the action and this tropical cyclone Sanvu, which appears to have more than one center at this moment in time, is that the dominant center on the left hand side that's exposed or is it on the right where things are really tightening up with that convection? That's a big question for forecasters right now and analysts and you can see here on the close up imagery it looks like the floater has fixed the center in between those two rotations and that's probably the uh, clever thing to do right now. I imagine looking at how this is going uh, my guess would be that the western one is already getting quite broad and might be the one that dies out and it's the eastern one that will eventually overcome it Either way, uh, wind shear looks like it's taken a toll as well and convection is displaced to the east and the system is struggling. Winds only around 40 to 45 miles per hour and that is expected and it is expected to weaken later on and only reach the uh, Mariana Islands as a depression and that's probably been a little bit hopeful actually. More rapid scan imagery here, you can see its progress and those two competing centers uh, but in general the storm is looking okay there but lots of work to do. Sea surface temperatures really starting to increase even more now in the eastern Pacific, at least in the hot spots there on the eastern part near Mexico, over 30 degrees Celsius waters. Gulf Stream starting to pick up there as well, 26 degree isotherm extending a little bit further north off the coast of Florida and the Gulf Current there looking good as well. And in the uh, Indian Ocean, you can see there the Bay of Bengal, really warm temperatures rising further north up to 30 degrees plus and in the Arabian Sea not far behind. Southwest Indian Ocean, some cooler spots starting to appear now at those lower latitudes. Near the Masarine Islands, probably around 27 to 28 degrees still, but it has been going down this season is shutting down in the southern hemisphere now. A uh, big gap there still from Cyclone Ilsa looks like that won't repair itself now either. Those sea surface temperatures really starting to drop off Western Australia. In the east though still a few areas that are still very warm there right now. It's not too late for a late season system. Same too for the South Pacific. Solomon Islands extremely warm down towards Vanuatu still looking good and towards New Caledonia it's a little bit hit and miss. Western Pacific also building in quite nicely as well with those really warm sea surface temperatures. Look around the Palawan Island of the Philippines there on the western side. Extremely warm sea surface temperatures in that neighborhood. 
Western Pacific in general is only a little bit above average. Uh, looking at the Eastern Pacific as well, it's half and half actually over the outer part of the Eastern Pacific Ocean. A big cool pool there, but look at the building El Nino effect down towards the Galapagos Islands and the equatorial Eastern Pacific. Those really warm sea surface temperatures still remain. Atlantic looking above average as well as a general rule at the moment. Oceanic heat content in the South Pacific looks like this. It is still looking very good, but there are holes starting to appear in it now as well, as you'd expect in this late season. Eastern Pacific looks at that. One or two little areas of orange now, 125 on that OHC chart, which is well above what it was at the peak of last season. But will the storms make that count for anything? We'll see. Western Pacific looking good. Let's check the GFS computer model then for the next five days and the only thing of interest really in that time period is what becomes of Sanbu. There it is moving west northwestwards and a matter of fact it is a landfall over southern Guam there around about the 25th or 26th. Uh, only as a very weak system though it loses tropical storm force winds within the next 24 hours according to the model run by the time it does reach Guam wind speeds will probably be barely of 20 miles per hour uh, or higher of course it could bring quite a bit of rain with it though in fact here is the rainfall chart where you can see just how much the GFS model is pumping into that region um, of course, quite a lot of rainfall has occurred over the Micronesian Islands. We're still expecting a little bit more in some areas and some of the isolated atolls to the northeast of Pompeii could get up to around 5 inches further of rainfall. That's 125 millimetres. On Pompeii itself, 3 inches expected. That's still 75 millimetres. And around about 100 millimetres expected or 4 inches on Guam and 1 inch further north on Saipan. So rainfall not looking too severe but of course we are expecting some and as storms move over even at a weakened state it could sometimes be heavy rain rates that can happen just over the course of an hour or two that can lead to flash flooding and that could wrap up the whole event so we'll see and monitor how that one looks closer to the time. In the longer range, look down here towards New Caledonia and there's that potential system that tries to form and rotate. I don't think it quite gets there on the GFS forecast, but of course things could change and it could get closer or further away to that fact by the time we get to it in about five to seven days time. Uh, eventually what that thing becomes there is a broad and quite strong extra tropical low that heads off towards New Zealand. They had one a couple of days ago from a system that we're monitoring as well and there is another one possibly headed towards the South Island. Scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items as well as full season and individual storm animations at your request. We also have our Still Waiting for Hone t-shirt because that is never going to go out of style for as long as we're still waiting for that goddamn storm. In the silly range then, out beyond 10 days towards day 16, there is the potential for another tropical cyclone and the GFS really goes off the deep end with this forming over the Solomon Islands, a classic late tracking uh, path here and becomes a very strong cyclone just off the coast of Papua New Guinea which would be extremely unusual but things like that have happened before very late into the season sometimes it cannot be completely ruled out but it is in the very long range I wouldn't give it much concern anytime soon and that is what the GFS is throwing out there right now you can talk about that and anything else in the wide world of tropics or the general world of weather by joining our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather chat at any time. Well, on this day, it was one of the classic storms in my mind. April 22nd, 1989, Cyclone Orson, in my opinion, showing Ilsa how it's done by really reaching Category 5 status and more besides, probably winds of 175 miles per hour at peak in this enormous storm as it headed towards the western coast of Australia. It uh, made landfall pretty much at Category 5 status as well, an extremely powerful storm back then and quite late in the season as well. We also had Typhoon Andy which pe peaked as a Category 5 the day before and was weakening through Category 4 intensity on this day in 1989. Back to this year and the first name on the Atlantic naming list is Arlene. In the Eastern Pacific it's Adrian and in the Central Pacific, as noted, we are still waiting for Hone. I doubt that will be number 17 though. 
In the Western Pacific, the next name now is Mawa. In the North Indian Ocean, we are still looking out for Mocha. And we are code blue for Sanvu right now due to high viewer demand and the potential for heavy rainfall. Only just scraping that category though. In the Australian region, if we have any more storms, next is Jasper, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Fabienne, and the South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.